someone ever come into your life and from the minute you laid eyes on him, you knew he was going to be your downfall? For me, that was this guy. Who is he? Honestly, it's barely worth mentioning. Because the real star of this story is... Me! Let me introduce myself. I'm the House of Usher. Fucked up scary tales with Liz. It was a pretty gross autumn day. Not the breezy, leafy, pumpkin spice kind of fall day that makes a basic bitch gag. Wet, gray, cold, here comes your seasonal depression kind of weather. The guy who owns the place had invited our house guest. My boy Roderick Usher is, well, he's kind of an odd duck. This is an aspirational portrait of him from his youth. In reality, his constitution was that of a man born of generations of inbreeding. Old Roddy had reached out to our house guest in hopes that the company would cheer him up. Now, you might be wondering why I'm ragging on this innocent putt so badly. Well, first off, when he saw me, he was very judgmental. Yikes! That's what I'd call a fixer-upper. Sure, I've seen better days. My walls are moldy and crumbling. The landscaping is bare and dilapidated. I have this crack that goes all the way from the foundation to the roof. But everyone deteriorates a bit with age. Plus, this guy acted like my very existence sunk him into a deep depression. Me, an empath, sensing that this neglected home symbolizes a greater disturbance of its inhabitants. No one's forcing you to be here, Eeyore. Lord, if it weren't bad enough, the overwhelmingly morbid condition of the house is doubled in its reflection in that fetid lake. Its windows are the eyes to its soul. And its soul is clearly going through something. Despite this brutal Zillow listing, our guest forged on and met with Roderick in the music room. Ah, my old friend. Good Lord, Roderick. You are a changed man. Ah, well, yes, everyone does deteriorate a bit with age. You're 27 years old. And it's been a long life. It's so fantastic to have you here. I have been so lonely. Your very presence is giving me life. What about your sister, Madeline? We don't talk about Madeline. No? No. Oh. How are you holding up? Your letter implied you'd been struggling with your health a bit? Oh yes, it is a family illness. Ah, something genetic. Roundabout way, yes. It affects me mostly through my senses. I can only bear the dimmest of lights, hence the bordello-inspired effects in here. I can only wear the softest of fabric, hence my very satiny jacket. I can only eat the blandest of foods, hence the lack of seasoning in the chicken we'll be having later. Well, that sounds difficult, but certainly manageable. Oh, no! It will kill me. Can you die of being very sensitive? Oh, no, not of that. It's just something I can feel in my bones. I wake up every day filled with dread, counting down the hours until I face my ultimate nemesis. Who? Fear itself. We do talk about Madeline in part two. The house is so silent and strange. I would never guess that your sister Madeline lives here as well. She's right behind you. Ah! Madeline Usher is the lady of the house, but she might as well be the specter of it. She too had a peculiar condition that had long baffled her doctors. Though I suspect it could be traced back to the family crest. What is it that the crest says? Incestio est bestio. Is it? Mm, yes, keeping it in the family has been quid pro quo as long as I can remember. I must admit it has left us in a sad way. When Madeline dies, and she most certainly will soon, that will be the end of the Usher family tree. You are a young man, Roderick. You could still meet someone and marry and continue the family. 
Did you not understand me? I said when Madeline dies, there will be no one left for me. The symptoms of Madeline's condition were as follows. Periods of cataleptic trances, morose wandering of the estate, the wasting away of the body, and a general apathy. I'm honestly not sure why her doctors were so baffled. She's obviously suffering from general Victorian lady syndrome. I have some very sad news. Madeline is dead. Really? I just got here! Well, don't take it personally. I am so sorry, my friend. How can I be of help? I could help to start make arrangements for her burial. Eh, here's the thing. Madeline's disease was so uncommon that I'm afraid these local doctors are going to be itching to dig her up and cut around to look at her insides. I am really uncomfortable right now. I just hate to think of grave robbers disturbing her peace and cutting up that beautiful pale body. So uncomfortable. So you can help me get her into the family vault. I'll leave her there for a couple of weeks until the fervor dies down. Let's head there now. So the vault appears to be under the guest room where I'm staying. That's unnerving. You don't know the half of it. Back in the day, we used to use this space to torture people. What? Yep, and check out that heavy door and the iron caging. Nobody's getting out of here, even if they tried to claw their way out. Okay, let's uh pop her into that drawer. It's so bizarre how even after death, the body still has a flush to it. It's almost as if she's still alive. Yes, that is weird, isn't it? But she's definitely dead. She is so dead, and I should know, because we're twins. We're connected, huh? Everything you tell me makes everything worse. Come on, let's shove her in there. Heave ho! Hmm, I'm craving a thin soup. How about you? It all falls apart, literally, in part three. After Madeline died, Roderick's peculiar melancholy only got worse. Our house guest did his best to entertain him, but there was only so much he could do. How about I read something to you? That sounds lovely. Oh, that book in your hand is my favorite. The Haunted Palace. It's about a house and a family that were once great, but are now in a moldering and desolate state. Seems a little on the nose, but... Roderick, you were once a great painter. Why don't we treat ourselves to an intimate paint and sip? Okay, it's a little embarrassing as a tipsy amateur, but here's my seaside sunset. Can I see yours? I think it came out pretty great. In my painting, the sun has supernovaed into a black hole and mercifully sucked us into nothingness. You know, you're such a talented musician. Would you play for me a bit? Oh, much too high pitched. Oh, too low. What if we took a walk, Roderick? Friend, there is no point in trying to ease my depressive state. It's like the house wants me to be morose and morbid. The house. This... Building wants you to be sad? Yes! With every crumbling brick, with every bit of fungi that grows and creeps. Roderick, I think your grief is getting to you. The house isn't alive. It doesn't want to bring you down with it. Over the next few days, we all got a lot moodier. And Roderick was a hot fucking mess. Ugh, Roderick, I think my watch is slow. What time have you got? Never! She was my sister! Honestly, things weren't great between me and Roderick either. You made me what I am, house! Bitch, please. And not long after Madeline's death, everything began to crumble. Oh. Oh. It, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's something. Well, I'm not going to get back to sleep anytime soon.
Have you seen it? Please, Roderick, way to creep up on a guy. The storm, look, how it raises spirits across the lake. Those are just will-o'-wisps, a natural occurrence. Please come, sit here and let me read to you. See, I've got one of your favorites, the uh, Mad Tryst of Sir Lancelot Canning. And Sir Ethelred lifted his powerful mace, assaulting the door of the lodging with reverberating blows. The door wrenched free of its hinges with a shriek. What? Once inside, Ethelred encountered a fierce dragon. No noise now, huh? He lifted his mace again, and as he struck the creature, it emoted a hideous cry. Uh, what the hell is happening? Go on. Go on! Okay, I'm not the only one hearing this, am I? Oh, I hear it, and I have heard it, and I know its source, though I dared not speak it out loud. And now, Madeline makes the very same journey as our own Sir Ethelred. She is coming, is she not? Here to avenge my hastiness in pushing her into the tomb while she was still living. Don't you see? She stands now outside the door. Madeline, no! Roderick, did you seriously just die of fright? And Madeline, how about you? Are you... Oh, nope. She's dead, too. You've officially worn out your welcome, buddy. You know what, House? You're right. I am fucking out of here. Hey, man, on your way out, can you pick up the narration for me? I'm kind of busy here with my dramatic ending. And so it was that the once great House of Usher had fallen. No more of its members living within its walls. And if that weren't enough to fuck a guy up, as I ran from the house, a bright light suddenly burst over the estate. I looked back and was astonished to see the moon shining through a crack in the family home. The roof to ground fissure that had been barely perceptible when I arrived was now wrenched open. I'll see you in hell! And before my eyes, the house literally broke apart like a chef releasing an egg from its shell. And the lake swallowed the entire house of Usher. <sighs> so, uh, that was the craziest vacation I ever went on. How about you? Fucked up fairy tales with Liz. Fucked up fairy tales with Liz.